So I've just completed and gone over all of the scheduling types that we have in CRD. What you'll notice is we have a few additional um, options and uh, settings here. The address book, you can uh, create and use the address book um, and use these for importing. So if I use it, my name, for example, and hit OK. Now you do have the ability to add in a group as well. So I can say sales group and add in the contact. And I've got a group and I can always add in additional groups and users. I'm gonna go back to one of these schedules that I've created. And if I go into my destination, let me, I'm in a bursting one. Let me go back into a regular um, schedule type and edit. So I've got this too. You'll notice I've got the CRD address book. Now you do have some additional options here, um, whether it's a text file, database source, but I can then just select um, who I want to add and enter that in. Now looking at this, I do need to double click and hit OK to add that in. Now anytime you add or change um, an account under the address book, it will update all schedules. So it's easily uh, a way to easily manage your um, recipients if you're using an email destination. The custom calendars, here's where you can add in and create a new custom calendar and select um, the dates that you would like to use. Data items, data items are a bit like the inserts um, you will use this if there is a specific query or formula um, that you need to use for a either parameter or part of a, a dynamic value creating a name, you can do so. So if I click on add um, special date, maybe there's like a special formula that's used to calculate something that's not very of the norm. I'm going to hit connect. Um, and when I say a date out of the norm, very special. You'll notice I've got current day, current date, maybe current date minus seven, which would be last week. We have first day of next month, first day of this month. Maybe it's a very random date that you need and you've got a formula for it that you've already created. You can always go here and copy and paste that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit parse hit no, hit OK. So I can use this data item as uh, in one of my parameters, or again, as when the insert screen op the insert screen populates, that's typically when you can use an insert within that uh, field or area of configuration. User constants. Um, a bit similar, um, you've got your formula and your definition. Uh, you will need to be able to evaluate the function um, or test, test it out. So um, using these parameters or inserts here and defining your own um, user constant. Themes, themes are just the configuration, the color of what CRD looks like. So I've got this orange, um, crystal emerald, so many different options um, depending on what color you like. Um, integrations, this is where um, you noticed for Slack or Dropbox or Google, we do integrate and you're, you are able to use them as a destination. What you'll notice is you can put in whatever account name so that you can remember what account, what Slack account, especially if you have multiple accounts. And then you can um, enter in your team name and connect. This does give you the ability. So if I type in here, which because I have this added may or may not work, I don't have an access token yet. But when you connect, what that will do is bring you to pretty much Slack to be able to connect to it. Uh, let me back that out here. I'll hit continue and then you will have the ability to send messages. Um, you have to give those permissions or allow those permissions before the access token, and I can hit save and close there. 
Now, why didn't it ask me to log in with my username and password? And that is because this is the same account that I already have on this machine, so it is already pre-saved for me. So those are the integrations, and again, with Dropbox, very similar. You're adding in your Dropbox account or your Google account there. Under Style, um, as you've seen previously, we have the tiles, which doesn't give you any information. You've just got, you know, um, these uh, images here. I do like to see the details because it gives me a, a nice, easy overview of what's going on. Um, as far as the last run, the execution, was it successful? And you can also select what details you want on that screen. So if I only want to know the destination, how often it runs, what was the last result of that run, and when is it going to run again, I can save that and just only have that information showing. Refreshing, you can manually refresh. This will just update uh, the information, destination, frequency, last result um, of this, the home screen here. You do have your full system search. So if you had so many schedules in all of these folders, uh, maybe you want to be able to easily find a report. I can go and start typing it in, and it will populate and show for me. Now we do have what we call Outlook. What this is, is more of an outlook view of your schedules and when schedules are set to run. So you'll notice here, I've got all of these reports that are set to execute and when they are gonna be executing. And I can change my different dates as well. So that covers pretty much everything under the Home tab. If I click on the System tab, I will have the System Monitor, a dashboard view. Now, you'll notice I've got the System Monitor listed here as well. So what is the System Monitor? This gives you, uh, as well as an overview of what schedules you have waiting to execute, as well as any schedules that are currently executing. If you are using the SMTP setup, you will have an email log, so any emails that are sent from CRD to your mail server will be populated here if it was successful. Um, my default is set to 14 days, but you can um, change that. Maybe you would like 30 days or 60 days worth of emails saved. Um, so it does give you the schedule name, the recipients, but it, you'll notice here it does have a file location because that is an actual a copy of the email that was sent. So you can go back and pull that up if needed for any reason. We do have an email queue. If any emails um, were in the middle of executing or sending, but for whatever reason the email failed to send, maybe your mail server was down at that time, they would be queued up here. And as soon as your mail server was back up and running, CRD would be attempting to retry every 30 seconds um, by default and send out those emails. The error log, any reports, um, again, that failed, any errors that have happened in the system will show here, and they are kept uh, for 30 days, again, default setting that can be changed. You do have your deferred delivery. Now, um, this is for the email destination specifically and any destinations that allow you to defer delivery. So if you want to have the report run, but you have the option selected to defer the delivery for a couple of hours, those would show up here. You do have a scheduled backup. A scheduled backup is of the CRD system, all the schedules and all the settings, um, and a copy of pretty much your database. Um, not an actual SQL database, but all the settings to where, if anything happened to this machine, and we needed to get CRD up and running on a new machine, we could uh, quickly fairly do so by installing CRD and then restoring a backup that hopefully you would have saved um, in a uh, network shared location. You do have a schedule refresh, so if you don't want to automatically refresh your reports before um, or schedules before every execution, you can manually do so here, 
or enable it and set a day of time of when it should automatically refresh. Um, history view, this is a great easy way to see the history of your reports. Um, instead of going into each one individually and editing it and going to the history, you can just go here and um, see the history. Any schedules that are failing um, or have failed and are in the middle of retrying will show up here. Uh, you will not typically see any schedules showing in this area because by default, again, it is set to immediately retry. So this will, if it, anything, pop up and immediately be removed in that section if anything, again, is set to retry or is in the middle of retrying. We do have the uh, collaboration I mentioned earlier where you've got multiple machines with the software installed and they need to collaborate together. I can enable um, and turn this on and what I would then need to do is um, browse to the location of where the CRD is installed on another machine, typically somewhere on the network. And I will go ahead and hit that turn off. We do have the user manager, so if you have multiple users that are creating schedules um, for your reports to be sent out, um, you can add the user and specify their security role. Um, administrator and user to, are the two roles that we do have, but you can add additional groups and set permissions as well. You'll notice here that we do have the ability to enable uh, Windows Integrated Authentication or Windows AD. So here you'll notice I've got the domain and the account that I am logged in as. So that way users don't have to worry about their password because it will automatically log them in based on the Windows account they're signed in on that machine. Here are the groups. So if I click on Add and just say, you know, User Group, here are all of the permissions that we have that are available. And by default, CRD does the permissions of everything is denied, and we will then give you permission to certain things. So by default, if you do set permissions for a user, um, they will not have access um, to anything unless you enable them to have access. So full access to other group members' schedules, for example, um, System monitor, there are things typically you may not want them to be able to delete schedules. You can restrict destinations. Uh, so if you only want them to be able to use a disk destination, you don't want them to be able to set up an email destination and have reports going out. Um, you can specify that. You can even um, assign specific default destinations that you have already created. So here, um, I've already got an email destination set up with the specific um, formatting that I want. Um, yep, these are the recipients that I want to use. Everything is set how I want. So that is what that user is going to use. I'm going to hit Apply. Have been is saved for the selected. I'm going to close it. So now this group that I, um, I have will only be able to use that specific email destination. We do have the blackout times, which we've mentioned previously. Any any specific time frame that schedule should not um, have the reports going out, you can specify and add in here a blackout time. With the custom tasks, you can block them based on the section of the custom task. So for example, we have the database options to insert a record, delete a record, grab a blob or save a blob. Um, you can either restrict um, access or allow access to just that option, or maybe it's just the general option or files and folder options that you want them to have access to. So yeah, let them you know, create a text file, modify a text file, merge a PDF, not a problem. Lastly, under the folders, um, which is used very often, especially for customers that have multiple um, users using the software, maybe you want to restrict what schedules they have access to see um, or even modify. You can only allow access to the following folders. 
So my user should only have access to the daily folder. Now I've seen customers that may use these folders for uh, their departments. So instead of annual, daily, monthly, weekly, I've added in the demo folder, maybe it's accounts, accounting, billing, support, sales, executive level. So maybe you don't want them to see the executive level and the billing folders and their daily reports and um, be able to modify anything. Um, you can restrict them by simply giving them access to the one folder location so they'll see the, only the schedules in that folder. All right. SMTP servers, um, you do have the ability to add in an additional SMTP server um, that allows you to use as a backup server. So um, should your main mail server go down and you've got a second backup, uh, you can add that in and say use this one as a backup server. Exporting schedules. What that means is the ability, if you have multiple installations, you can export, uh, I've created this package. I now want to move this into my production machine because I know it works, I've tested it out. You can use the export schedule option, select the report that you want to send, and it basically saves all of your configuration settings. Um, exactly how you've already set it up and simply move it to another CRD machine. And it does that either by a file system or an ODBC um, SQL Server connection. Operational hours, this is simply putting in the hours of operation. Um, again, if you're using blackout times or scheduling, you'll, you would want to do that under the general options or permissions. And then you've got your backup and restore options. You can always click backup, and this is similar to the system backup under the system monitor, but that is doing it on a scheduled time frame. If you want to manually backup, you can do so. Um, does not take very long to do. So if I go to desktop, hit OK, typically within a few seconds, all of your data is backed up successfully. I'm going to skip over the resources for just a moment and go over to configuration. Um, and I'm going to look into this here. So under reports, we have a few different schedule types. I'm just going to click on one. Um, what What is this uh, list of reports? What is that? Um, so based on my single schedule, what I've selected, I have a list of all of the details of that schedule specifically. So I wanted to know all of my single schedules. I wanted to know the database path or maybe the report name of all of my single schedules. You can see that information is here. Now I can go to my field chooser and select what columns of information that I want to see. Do I want to include bursting schedules? Do I want to include and see the BCC of any schedules um, that may be using it? Who is BCC'd on any of the reports? All of these different options. Um, so it's like a report of your CRD system and all the schedules and reports that you have. When it comes to login information for databases, this is the um, SQL Server account a database that CRD is connected to and what SQL account is being used. And then you've got your console, which I apologize here, it looks like I don't have access to that. The console is a way to easily uh, run a query against the CRD database. Um, there are times where support may need to uh, go in and run a query to um, help troubleshoot an issue. Uh, it would be the support team or someone um, on, on the, the technical side who may go in and open this up. It is not typically for the end users, so you would never really need access to this. All right, I'm gonna go back under resources. And you have your About CRD, which just provides you with your licensing information if you have activated the software and purchased. The Help 
will bring you to our help center, um, which great is you can see all the articles. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on installing with screen captures, um, how do you configure email and messaging in CRD. So it's a great resource, especially if you are starting out with CRD um, as a new user. We do have a YouTube uh, channel where we have recorded demos or what I would say tutorial demos. So how do you create a bursting schedule, um, an event-based schedule using this specific monitoring a file or has been modified? So this is a great little um, individual uh, videos of bursting, for example, bursting basic, bursting um, advanced. So you're able to replay those um, as you need. Um, checking for updates, again, this is automatic if you've got the option enabled um, under the main options section. Um, anytime the software opens, it will check for an update and let you know if there is one. Um, logging a call, great feature um, if you need to get in touch with technical support. You can do it directly from within the software. All this does is bring you to our uh, website where you can log the ticket. And again, you can do this directly from our knowledge base as well. Uh, activating the software, deactivating the software. Uh, only time you would ever really need to deactivate is if you're no longer using the software or if you are migrating to a new machine. You may need to deactivate it, which means it will take the license off and move it to a new machine. The very last thing I'm going to show here, um, we do have some pack, um, some folders already predefined and created. Anything that may have already failed today, any single schedules or packages that have failed. But I can also create what we call a smart folder. So if, because we have all of these different folders and you may have lots of different schedules going on, maybe you want to see an easy view of all of your enabled schedules. I can go here and click on this little icon. I want to see enabled schedules. Now, these are all of the conditions um, of smart folders that you can create. So I can get um, all of the schedules where the CC contains maybe my email address or a specific email address. Maybe there's a specific error message on a schedule. Um, that you're looking for, um, or a folder name. Key, there's a keyword, so if you are entering in keywords for your schedules, um, you can search for a keyword and have a folder structure. Now, in my case, I'm going to go to status, and I want all of my enabled schedules in one easy view, no matter what folder they're located in. The one is for enabled, zero for disabled. I'm going to hit next and finish. So now I've got my enabled schedules, and what you'll notice here, no matter what folder they would be in, they would show here. And again, I can change this to the detailed view as well. So this is pretty much a demo of CRD and uh, all the options and functionality that it has to offer. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.